welcome to CMO 103, Introduction to Creative Industries. Today I have a very special guest. I have Dr. Joe Loth, who is the discipline lead for theatre and performance. Hello. Here at USC. And Joe's going to tell us a little bit about the programme in terms of what you can expect from drama at USC. And also talk a little bit about the key concept of audience and how drama works with audience. And towards the end of this lecture, we'll also be talking about some of the characteristics or the qualities that you need to be successful in drama within the creative industries. So welcome, Joe. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Yeah. So first of all, would you be able to tell the students a little bit about what we offer here at USC in terms of theatre and performance? Absolutely, yes. So we have uh, a theatre and performance program that is designed to prepare students for the live performance industry. And we prepare students in a range of ways. And we look at acting, directing, devising, script writing, leadership, theatre history, voice and design. So we design, but so basically we uh, give students a whole range of skills and experience in many different areas and from that help students to find their own niche within the industry and then really zone in on that niche. Keeping in mind that in order to be employable you want to have as many skills as possible. Mm. Well it's really interesting because you were talking about that range of skills and I was actually thinking that a lot of those skills would be useful for people that are outside of drama. Yes, actually, that's very yeah. true. So a lot of the skills developed in drama, such as communication, mm -hmm. teamwork, uh, managing deadlines, handling pressure, yeah. are very transferable to mm -hmm. other areas. So uh, we encar I encourage students to think about the other applications of the skill they learn in theatre and performance across other careers that they might choose as well. Mm -hmm. So students are able to do electives in our courses as well as part of other programs yep. that can help develop those skills. Yeah. So you have, I'm assuming, a major and a minor. So what, what constitutes a major? So uh, we, a major is constituted by eight courses, mm -hmm. which is we have six core courses and then you get to choose two electives from a range of options. Mm -hmm. The minor is four courses. Okay. Yeah. So actually a student could possibly take a major and two minors. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So it's, there's a lot of flexibility in this program, which is going to allow you to develop all of those skills. Mm. And as Joe was saying, a lot of these particular skills are very transferable to all the areas that you'll be engaging with in the creative industries. So tell me a little bit about you, Joe. Yes. And, and your career. And, you know, well, you've obviously used drama and, and theatre and performance in, in various ways. Yeah. So, so tell me about that and how that's informed how you create this, this rounded practitioner and why you do that. Absolutely. So I've had a range of experiences and I've loved doing many different roles mm -hmm. within my career. So I started out working in physical theatre and I worked with a company called Frank Productions and I toured to Japan and around Australia with those that company and when I started out I just thought I just want to be an actor and that's all I want to do so I focused on that for six years with the company and then after leaving that company I started to explore other avenues so in addition to being an actor I, I currently and have worked as a director I also work as a playwright and I've also done been a cabaret performer and a singer-songwriter yeah, yeah. I've been a teacher Oh, all through uh, that time and I've worked in producing shows as well mm -hmm. so and in the last show that I did I was the co-designer so <laughs> I'm a living example of how it's important to be multi-skilled mm -hmm. and I also say that I have loved doing so many different things I'm someone who gets bored easily so I just love having all these different areas that I can go move mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. and it's so interesting because even though I've worked um, in, in many separate areas I find they've all they've all compiled to give me a, to help me with my next project. Mm -hmm. So my work as a writer has made me a better director, I believe. My work as an actor has made me a better, better director mm -hmm. and they all sort of help each other. Yeah, it's interesting because we were talking with um, Dr. Paul Williams and he was talking about the fact that nothing is wasted. Absolutely. That you actually, sometimes you need, might need to put things to one side, but you might pick it up again or it'll Form or inform something else. Yes. So students, as you say, can do a major, a minor, and or electives. Yes. And I understand that there's something um, that's going to be offered around a badge degree. And what, yes. What's, what's what's that about? This is actually really exciting okay. because 
Previously, we've just had an eight subject major that we could offer. Now we're actually moving to 12 discipline specific subjects within a Bachelor of Creative Industries. Mm -hmm. So what this creates is what we're calling a badge program, which would be Bachelor of Creative Industries and then theater and performance. So it basically means that students are getting more skills in the area mm -hmm. and if you know that you really want to work in theatre and performance and that's your thing, then I highly recommend that you do the 12 course badge program. Mm. And so what has been added? What, what do yeah. students have? As so we've extras? added a design course, which yeah. is fantastic. So we've brought in a design, introduction to design, which we've found has been so helpful for students when they're doing directing and when they're learning how to promote their own shows. It's, it's important to have an idea of um, design. Yeah. We brought in the voice course um, in order so that students can develop their vocal skills. And, ba and then the other thing we've done is made all of the elective options that previously students had to choose between basically are just part of the program. Brilliant. Because we, some of our electives are physical theatre, theatre production, screenwriting, doing an internship, and so many students mm -hmm wanted to do everything. So now they basically can just do all of the theatre and performance subjects that we Fantastic. offer. So you mentioned at the end there something about an internship. Yeah. And obviously, you know, getting experience in the field does a number of things. It allows you to identify where your gaps are, where you actually still need to continue to develop your skills. It allows you to present to other people your skills and develop new skills as you go. Um, and of course, the other thing is that it, it gives you that opportunity to network. So I'm assuming, is networking really important in theatre? Absolutely, sports? yeah. Networking is essential. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think that networking is going to a fancy event with champagne glass mm -hmm. in hand, which it can be, and that's very fun. Yeah. But really, I encourage people to think of networking as everything you do in life is building your network. So our students who've done internships, most of them have actually gotten work opportunities directly out of those internships mm -hmm. because they have impressed the people that they've worked with and that has led to them getting another job in the same company or through um, people who knew them in that company get, uh, yeah. recommending them to someone else. So it's basically networking is connecting you with the industry and, and giving, the, giving you those connections to get you employment. Mm. So you'd yeah. highly recommend that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the theatre internships have been our most successful course in terms of really connecting students with industry. Mm -hmm. And it's a, the, the thing about the internship too is it challenges students to identify what they really want to do. And so we've had a student who decided she really wanted to be a stage manager and then she went and did an internship with the Bois and Belvoir Street mm -hmm. and now she's working as a professional stage manager. And we've had students who want to be a producer, writers. So it gives you that opportunity to really hone in on something that you're very interested in and really work out if that's for you. Mm -hmm. And then if it is, give you that um, step into that into those industry connections, mm. yeah. And do you have to be in the third year to do the internship? Yes, it's the third year yeah. course. Okay, yeah, excellent. And so you just sort of mentioned networking and, and everything you do, and I love that, by the way. Mm. Everything you do is 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 part of your networking because it's actually you developing your skills and showcasing who you are as well as what you can do. Um, in terms of the internship and in terms of all of the networking opportunities that students might have, what skills do you feel that they need, that they need, you need, to, um, to develop and to be able to show to be successful? Absolutely. So uh, the first thing is, the first skill is communication. Mm. Is how do you actually articulate what you need to say? How do you relate and talk to a lot of different people with different ideas and different ways of expressing themselves? Mm. And then how you work in a team. So communication and teamwork are just key skills in theatre and performance and in all jobs as yeah. well. So yeah. that's, those are the uh, very transferable skills mm -hmm. that we work on in theatre and performance. Uh, so I've got my list of things here. Uh, the ability to work under pressure is a really important skill if you're going to work in theatre and performance. The deadlines are quite intense and you, when you have opening night, there is no asking for an extension. There is no tell, uh, saying, oh, yeah. to the reviewers, oh, can you come in a couple of days? Because the show's going to be much better then. <laughs> it's, it's, so you have to really yeah. work under pressure. Mm. And that can create some really amazing results when you've got a group of people working together as a team. And I'm always surprised by the results that happen 
in that particular environment. But you do need to be able to work under pressure mm -hmm. and manage deadlines and handle stress mm -hmm. and learn how to be calm under pressure. And the best directors I've worked with, and I'm always amazed by them, are the ones who are able to be completely calm the night before a show when everything's going wrong. <laughs> and it, it's an incredible skill to develop yeah. in life, is just to know that it's a stressful situation, but nothing's gained by getting, <laughs> getting upset and just maintaining your calm under wow. pressure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next on my list is resilience. Mm. So being able to take knockbacks, it's and and knowing and you know you, you you apply for a grant, you don't get it, you go for the next one. You apply for a role, you don't get it, you go for the next one. Mm. You, it's actually a key skill, and it is a skill knowing how to bounce back. And you know, especially if you're an actor or performer, you have mm. to develop a thick skin that allows you to keep working in the industry and also at the same time stay sensitive too. So it's, it's quite a balance. It is. Uh, yes. Because that sensitivity is required for all those nuances of communication you were talking yeah. about. Empathy, engagement with character, with scenario, with context of where you're working. Yeah. So you kind of need to be porous almost. You need to take in and at the same time you also need to have that really good sense of self to yeah. say I'm going to I'm going to do it again. I'm going to step up and I'm going to try again and, yeah. and that's pretty tough isn't it but and, it, I suppose yeah. it's with practice do you yeah. think you get better at it with you get practice? better with practice and yeah. being aware of it too and to share some per something personal as mm. well I actually worked with um, a creative arts therapist Margie Brown Ash in Brisbane yeah. and she supports a lot of artists to help develop resistance so actually consciously going to someone to talk to work through this to say I need some help with this I'm, I'm devastated by this particular result how do I approach that and Margie actually did her PhD in, in resilience for artists mm. and really so it's it's not just about practice it's about really being conscious of it as well and I think resilience also goes hand in hand with passion which is an essential thing that you need yeah. working in the arts yeah. and what's helped me in terms of my, my own resilience is focusing on what why I love what I do and the fact that no matter how many knockbacks you get, I um, you, I love what I do, so I want to do it, and I'm I'm doing it for the love of it. I'm not doing it for the success along the way, mm. and that helps the resilience too because you go, okay, I didn't get that opportunity, but I'm going just going to keep doing this. This is going to be the rest of my life working on this thing. So. Mm off I go. <laughs> yeah. I think it's really easy because when it's somebody else, it's, it's really easy, isn't it, to say to somebody else, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, go again. It's not about you. Yeah. There are a hundred factors, there are a hundred reasons why somebody else got that grant, got that gig, got that role, whatever it is. A hundred yeah. reasons. And actually only a tiny percentage of that is about you. Um, and that's really easy to give to other people as advice. It's actually quite hard to remember. Yes, it is. <laughs> to retain. Um, and I really like that there where you, you actually do identify that there may be times when you get specialist support and help yep. for that as well, that we can't always be everything and do everything ourselves, that there are specialists that might be able to support us with that. Mm. Um, so I think, I think we've talked about the, the program, I think we've talked about the characteristics, that, um, that are required. Before we move on to the concept of audience, have you got any kind of tips for students or emerging creatives? I'd say go to as much, if you're interested in theatre and performance, go to as much performance as you can. Mm. Just see as much as you can and get excited about what people are doing and take opportunities too to look online and see what's happening internationally mm. and immerse yourself in it too. Yeah. Because if you're interested in working in the industry, it's all about seeing those things. And that's how you become a better artist too, is by being exposed to great artists. Yeah. yeah. So you can watch, absorb, analyse, why is that working? Yeah. Why was that such a magical moment? Why was I touched at that moment and not another moment? What, what was happening there? Mm. Um, so, so you're kind of engaging in it, but also cognitively engaging and not just emotionally as well. Yeah. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about audience, because um, that's one of those key concepts that we have in the creative industries. How do you consider audience within theatre and performance? It's essential. <laughs> and I love theatre performance that's my passion mm. and what makes it special is 
the connection with that audience. That live performative moment is mm. just so incredible. And the great thing about doing a show is anyone who's done a show would know that it, it changes with every audience. In every performance has its own special feel mm. and it is a shared connection that you have with your audience. So that's, that's why I love theatre. And, and when I've done cabaret performance, that's the same kind of thing, you're connecting with your audience. Mm. It's, it, audience is just essential. Mm. The thing to realise now as well is that the concept of audience is really changing. Mm. So it used to be that the audience was a passive consumer and just seen as that passive consumer where they would just sit there and go, okay, thank you, we like it or we don't. Yep. But now yeah. there is this concept of the active audience, which we see people engaging with online material. They can actually start to change it and their responses can affect what happens. And in theatre, the most exciting performances are where they, the audience is actually involved as an active participant. You know, so we can have this. How it happens in many different ways. There's um, immersive theatre. There's participatory theatre. Uh, there's a couple of productions I've seen that's been quite influential on me. The one by Zen Zenzo Physical Theatre, where we imagined the audience was immersed in a video game, yeah. and it was in the Judith Wright Centre, and we actually walked around the whole building as if we were w going through parts of this live game. Yeah. And another performance by one of my favourite artists, Daniel Evans, who's a director and writer and works with his company, The Good Room, uh, they created a show where they had an, a survey from the audience asking them for their experiences of love. And so you fill in your little survey and say, here's some my experience of love. And they took all these anonymous responses and then created a show out of it too. Beautiful. So that's an, a way of going, look, Tell us your stories. We will create a work for you, our audience, and share them with you. And I know a lot of people whose own stories were yeah, represented on stage, beautiful. and it was just apparently very powerful mm. for those people. Mm. Uh, so, some yeah. recognizability as well, because it's so authentic. These, these are really lived experiences. Yeah, yeah beautiful. So, it, so it's having a respect for audience, yeah. having a love and respect and adoration for audience and the connection with audience. And most recently, I've just done a very simple thing with, I directed a performance of Julius Caesar last year and then we did an audience survey on their responses. Mm. And this year I have the opportunity to redevelop the performance and I'm actually using the feedback that I got from the audiences yeah. about what they liked, uh, things that they didn't like that we can change, and some moments of the performance that they really liked and wanted to see more of, yes. and we can actually take that further. So that's very exciting for me is to be responding directly to what people asked for and mm. it's a great um, luxury for me too to revisit a work and and finesse it and try new things with it yeah so again it's back to that both two things I think respect and adoration for your audience but also your responsiveness yeah to them as well um, and I think that you don't necessarily have to be a theatre before a theatre performer to have that love of your audience I think all of you will have an audience and having a respect and a listening ear to your audience I think is essential in any of the industries that you're going to go into in your creative works. Um, so Joe, any last bit of inspiration, <laughs> advice? Um, yes, enjoy just, what you do. Yeah. Enjoy what you do and I... I constantly try to remind myself that that I love my job. Yeah. When I get stressed with my work yeah. Yeah. and when I'm putting on a show, that I do it for the love of it. And so enjoy every moment. Beautiful. Okay. That's our challenge to you, is to enjoy every moment of it, including the learning and the learning journey towards that as well. So thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Joe. Thank and, you. Um, I look forward to speaking to you next week. Okay, take care. Bye.